Hi, welcome back to McNally's Musket Missive. I'm Harry McNally, and this is not a musket. This is a rifle. By the end of the American Revolution, all British infantry battalions fighting in the Americas had uh, organized their own rifle companies uh, to be used as skirmishers. Instead of fighting in the, uh, in the traditional uh, long lines of battle of the time, skirmishers fought in pairs and would just uh, needle and harass uh, enemy units uh, ahead of the uh, major engagement. Uh, the idea being uh, you'd, uh, you'd wreak havoc on morale, uh, target, uh, t uh, take down the... Uh, the, the, the command structure and just do what damage you can to uh, to the enemy before the actual battle between the lines. Um, by 1800, uh, the British Board of Ordnance was developing a, a rifle to outfit an entire regiment of riflemen and approved a pattern in that year um, designed by Ezekiel Baker. Uh, during its working life, it was called the uh, rifled carbine due to its length, but today we know it best as the Baker Rifle. Uh, during its life, the uh, Baker Rifle had five different patterns. The Pattern 1800, uh, the Pattern 1805, which had some slight revisions to its patch box and added a slit to the stock so that uh, the ramrod wouldn't get stuck if, uh, if it was dirty or if the wood swelled due to moisture. Uh, the Pattern 1810, which was more or less the same except it fired uh, the same ammunition as a musket, and they discovered that uh, pushing that much lead out of one of these guys was not a lot of fun for your so for your shoulder. Uh, the, mo the patterns 1820 and 23, which don't really uh, I don't really know the differences between them and the uh, the previous ones. What we have here is a pattern 1800/15. Uh, in 1815, um, they uh, incorporated the lessons from the Napoleonic Wars, uh, specifically that the uh, the sword bayonet uh, that was used with the Baker rifle wasn't particularly useful as a bayonet, and it was often used as a, as a cooking implement, uh, just everything but a bayonet, pretty much. Uh, so what they did was, instead of having the stock going all the way to the end of the barrel, they cut it back, uh, they also moved the rear sight back, installed uh, a bayonet lug, and uh, removed the bar for the sword bayonet, and just adapted a socket bayonet for this musket, rather, for this rifle. Um, I don't have one. They are not particularly common. Um, they only made this modification to Pattern 1800, mus uh, pattern 1800 rifles. Um, and I, to my, my, I, I think only 5,000 or so were so, uh, were so modified. So as a result, the, uh, the, the bayonet for this, uh, for this rifle is fairly uncommon. Uh, Let's get it over to the light box, and I'll better explain the differences between this and the standard pattern, standard pattern 1800. Okay, so right off the bat, you may have noticed that I've done a little bit of cropping to the photo so it fits into frame better, and that way we also get to see the, uh, the full object a little bit better. Uh, so first off, right off the bat, we noticed that the Baker rifle is shorter than a musket. Uh, that's because it's meant as a skirmisher's weapon. You want it something a little bit smaller, a little bit handier. Also, um, you don't need as long a barrel with a rifle as you do with a musket. Um, because of the way the uh, bullet grips the rifling in the bore, a uh, shorter barrel doesn't really matter. You still get uh, full velocity out of it because more gas is trapped behind the bullet. Um, moving to the other side, you'll notice that there's a cheek rest on the buttstock. A uh, rather fancy brass uh, side plate for the lock. Uh, going forward, we've got the lock itself. Uh, you'll also notice a brass disc set into the stock behind the lock. Uh, that was no nominally meant for uh, unit markings and whatnot, but a lot of times you'd actually see unit markings on the barrel tang instead, uh, when they were actually marked. A lot of them weren't. Uh, first, ahead of the toolbox, we see a uh, British uh, military acceptance stamp, and then we've got the... Uh, Pattern 1800 style uh, uh, patch box on the uh, butt. Uh, it's distinguished from the pattern 1805 because it's got those square edges. Uh, opening her up, we see that it's a two compartment patch box, correct for a model, for a pattern 1800. Um, you would have uh, your 
cleaning tools inside the square compartment and in the round compartment you would have uh, patches for loading your uh, your bullets. The patches would uh, act kind of like a sabo, it would go around the, the bullet to grip the rifling better. And if you've watched the British muzzle loader series on uh, Baker Rifle uh, ammunition, you'll know that they get discarded uh, upon firing. And if you haven't, I strongly, strongly recommend them. Uh, moving forward, we've got the rear sight. Um, I did a little bit of digging and I mentioned that I didn't know what the difference between the later pattern Baker rifles were. Uh, the later pattern Baker rifles had a simplified block rear sight. Uh, this uh, has a, uh, a folding leaf sight. Um, I've been unable to find the uh, what the ranges these were set for. I would imagine that the uh, fixed one is 100 yards and I think uh, the next one up is 300 yards, but I'm not certain of that. Uh, we've got the barrel keys holding the barrel in place, and unlike uh, everything else we've seen, um, the ramrod isn't held in place in a groove in the stock so much as it is these brass pipes. Uh, moving forward, we see the next brass pipe, uh, the front sling swivel, which also acts as another barrel key, uh, the front barrel key, uh, the rear, uh, the, rather the front sight, which has been moved back from its position uh, near the end of the muzzle to accommodate the... Uh, the socket bayonet, we see the stud for the socket bayonet there. Um, originally, that nose cap would have gone almost all the way to the end of the muzzle. But, uh, as I mentioned before, the pattern 1800-15 was modified to take a socket bayonet. Also notice the ramrod. That, the head of that ramrod does not fit down the uh, muzzle. That is actually a palm rest for the, for the rifleman. Um, loading a rifle in this era was more difficult than loading a musket because the ball had to grip tightly in the uh, grooves of the barrel in order to fire accurately. And as a result of that, uh, this being before the development of the of the uh, minier ball, um, this ended up, you, you're forcing a, a, a ball about the size of, uh, of the board down into it and that requires some force. Early riflemen were actually issued mallets. Uh, looking closer at the barrel, we see where the bar for the uh, original sword bayonet would have gone. And let's digress here from the uh, light box and talk about the bayonets of the Baker rifle. Uh, moving from right to left is the chronology of the Baker rifle bayonet. Uh, the first three being the sword bayonets. Uh, uh, then in the middle we've got the socket bayonet which would have been correct for this. Um, as of filming this I didn't have one but as of recording this I do have one but I don't have access to it. Uh, and then the last three are what's called hand bayonets for the last pattern Baker rifles. Uh, going to the other side again that uh, fancy Dan stock side plate. Um, some markings on the uh, stock. I don't have the kind of references that I do for uh, for U.S. muskets uh, for British acceptance stamps, so I really can't tell you what they mean. Uh, you can just make out on the barrel some proof markings. Um, going for the on the other side, we see uh, the rear sight again, and the other side of those barrel keys. Uh, the British, instead of using barrel bands like everybody else, use these keys both on the Baker rifle and their Brown Best infantry musket. Uh, going forward again, we see that the uh, the front sling swivel is held in place with a screw. This one has seen a lot of ill-fitting screwdrivers in its time. Uh, for the 1815 uh, conversion, uh, they had they would have moved that and the front barrel key uh, back when they trim the stock for the socket bayonet. Uh, looking at the underside, we see, I believe this ramrod is actually off of a pattern 1805 uh, because of the shape of the, uh, of, uh, we'll, we'll call it the palm rest. I don't know what, uh, what they would have called it off the top of my head. Uh, we'll notice that there's a rather large swell in the bayonet, rather like the, like the US model 1855 and 1861, although it's a lot more pronounced and larger on this well, rather larger bayonet. Rather larger ramrod, rather. Whoops. Uh, pulling it out of the uh, out of the rifle. Here we see there's the swell. Uh, there's a there's a hole through the bayonet there. That's for one of the tools to give you better purchase uh, when when using it as a cleaning implement. Now here we have the ramming end. 
Uh, unlike pretty much any other military ramrod you're ever going to see, this one is threaded for cleaning tools, but it is female threaded instead of male threaded. And here we have a pattern 1805 Baker rifle that was never converted to socket bayonet. So at the front you see that the, uh, the nose cap goes almost all the way to the front. The front sight is much closer to the end of the muzzle. Um, and the bar for the sword bayonet. Underneath, I was talking before how the pattern 1800 had a solid stock and the pattern 1805 had a split stock to allow uh, any swelling of the uh, wood or uh, dirt debris getting in there wouldn't interrupt the uh, ability of the rifleman to get the ramrod in and out. Uh, you can see that there's a cut going all the way back to the trigger guard. That's the, uh, that's the cut I was talking about. The flintlock Baker rifle was replaced in British service in the 1830s with the percussion Brunswick rifle. But that wasn't the end of the service life of the Baker. Uh, for example, I know that more than a few of them saw use at the Alamo, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to find out that uh, some of them served during the American Civil War. Um, and thanks to Bernard Cornwell's book series and the subsequent t uh, TV uh, movie series starring Sean Bean, um, the Baker rifle is now a legend. Uh, that's everything I have for this episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you are, uh, if there's anything you'd like in particular for me to, to talk about, please, by all means, let me know. Um, I would like to thank my Patreon supporters for their kind, uh, for their kind generosity in keeping me going. Uh, if you would like to become one of them, there's a link down in the description below. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.